For the record, for people listening to this podcast from Media Matters and taking things out of context that I've said, I've been killing zombies and not really paying attention to what I'm saying at the same time. I apparently can't multitask. <laughs> now, I'm going to title this Eric Erickson Predicts Armageddon to be <laughs> next week. Hey guys, Steve Gutowski here, back with another episode of Games and Guns. I've got the great Eric Erickson of Red State and uh, also the radio now. Uh, I guess it's been that way for a little while. I feel like I'm old now because I knew you before all that. <laughs> knew you before. <laughs> before. Way back when. We're going to play some Plants vs. Zombies Garden Warfare, which is one of my favorite Xbox games, or Xbox One games, right now. It's just super, super fun. And there's only like five Xbox One games available, so. <laughs> yeah. And we're going to talk a little bit about... Uh, the IRS, the new stuff coming out about the IRS scandal, as well as maybe a little bit of the Redskins nonsense. Right now we're trying to uh, stave off a zombie invasion and save our yeah. our uh, lovely scarecrow guy. So now the question here is whether or not I can multitask. Can I kill zombies and talk at the same time? <laughs> it's, uh, it's always a challenge, I think. We also have Eric's uh, son on the show as well. Uh, surprise he, So he's sitting back quietly. Yes. <laughs> he's being very good. But there he is. What, uh, what's your son's name? Donner. How you doing, Donner? Uh, he, he can't, can't hear, hear you. He can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. So apparently uh, the IRS is still working on you know Windows 95 and all their... Uh, yeah, isn't it amazing that you and I could be sitting here playing... Uh, Xbox talking to each other over the internet and recording it, and somehow the IRS can't find emails. Yeah. Somehow in the year 2014, they magically lost all the, the important, the, or all the emails involved with a major scandal. That just seems super likely that that's really what happened, right? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I don't even know any Democrats who actually believe them. The best the Democrats are doing are, are claiming, well, George Bush did this too. To bring them back to life. There we go. I don't buy it for a second that, that they really lost her emails. Yeah, I, I mean, it's so basically what the Obama administration is trying to claim is that uh, every business in America, because of Sarbanes-Oxley, has to go through burdensome backup regulatory rules and whatnot. And in fact, uh, the government doesn't have to do anything. So right. you go to jail if you lose your emails related to something the IRS wants. But uh, IRS employees, apparently, they get retirement benefits. Right. Like, give me a break. And what, wasn't there an excuse that like her hard drive crashed and that's why they don't have yeah. the emails? What kind of yeah. email system are they using that, I, yeah. that doesn't uh, you know, have automatically backed up to, uh, it, to the cloud? For, in order, for an administration that obsesses over what Rush Limbaugh says, if they bothered listening to his program, they'd learn about iDrive. Right. Even if they're just using Ex Microsoft Exchange, which I think is what they, uh, what's been reported as what they use, there's no yeah. way that, that a hard drive crash would make you lose all your emails. That's just nonsense. It's not yeah, nonsense. I mean, they, unless they, they took out the server. And, you know, interestingly enough, what the IRS is saying now is that it they've given thousands and thousands of emails. Well, that's true, but, you know, there were 5,000 hours of Watergate tapes, and they were only ever interested in 18 minutes. The guy in charge of the IRS went to uh, Congress and told them that he was going to give them all of the remaining emails. Yeah. So what happened? How did he not know at that point? What happened between when he said that and now when they can't? Oh, now we can't find him. Sorry. Right. It just it just stinks. And even even people who aren't uh, you know reliably conservative like uh, Ron Ron Freuner at uh, uh, was it the National Journal? He, National Journal. Yeah. Yeah. He he said that there should be a special prosecutor appointed, and frankly, I, I don't think that's a bad idea. Yeah. I mean, at this point, I think we need one. Yeah, I mean it's hard to it's hard to just sort of sit back and, and take uh, all these ridiculous excuses uh, in good faith anymore. Yeah, something something needs to be done to be able to restore people's. You know, and here's the thing: the um, it's one of those. If George Bush did it, mm -hmm. um, it, the left would be having a field day if it was Bush. 
Of course. Honestly, I don't think anything's going to come of it. I don't think we'll ever see a special prosecutor. I don't think we'll ever get the emails. What no, we won't get a special prosecutor because Eric Holder now, since the special prosecutor law lapsed, Eric Holder gets to be the one to appoint it, and we're seeing an attorney general who uh, is all upset about it, or, or is playing part of the games. Now, what's so interesting about that is that uh, Archibald Cox, the Watergate investigator, was a hero because the attorney general dismissed him. Robert Bork, that was one of the big issues during his confirmation hearings, is, is he uh, tossed uh, Archibald Cox from the investigation. And so Cox was the murder, and Bork was a bad guy for doing it. And now suddenly what we see is uh, the media is giving Eric Holder a complete pass. Yeah. Which isn't surprising, but it's it's sad. It's wrong. The media is much more interested in protecting the precious. As I already said, it would be completely different if it was a Republican president. Yeah. There's You couldn't get away with something like that. Oh, we lost all the no. emails. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. MSNBC would be it. Every night. And not just MSNBC. Every... Every media outlet, and, and rightfully so, because it's ridiculous. It's an absurd excuse. It's in this yeah. in this era, and and this level of technology that is now commonplace. There's no way that the IRS just lost these emails. What we're also seeing here is, I mean, look for example at the at this um, Redskin situation. What mm -hmm. they're largely admitting here is that white liberals in Washington D.C can be aggrieved and destroy private enterprise when they're unhappy. Yeah, because first of all, they're the, they're the people that are really upset and driving the whole Redskins thing. They're aware of all the white privilege that they've had, and, right. and so now they want to take away everybody else's fun because they feel guilty about things and they sit down to pee. <laughs> It's pretty good. I mean, though. seriously, it, it is, it's predictable when you look at the people who are outraged by the Redskins situation. It, it's predictable who is upset. It, it's all these left publications, mm -hmm. um, the, the, these plaid wearing hipsters in their skinny jeans in Washington, D.C., and a bunch of reporters who believe they're out to save the world and see the world in terms of victims. I mean, that, that's the nature of politics in the media in Washington is every story has to have a victim. And in this case, it's not the rich Redskins owner. It is it's the people who could care less, but all these Bibles can feel good about themselves by going after the Redskins and feel like they've accomplished something. Right. Because I don't think uh, for most Native Americans, the first thing on their uh, agenda for what needs to change is football team names. Yeah. Uh, they have a lot, I mean, there's a lot of other things that, uh, you know, the... They have their own form of uh, government health care provided by the federal government that is probably worse yeah. than, than the uh, VA, even. Yep. And I don't think the, the first thing on most people who live on a reservation's mind is that the Redskins name uh, yeah. is supposedly offensive. Yeah, Because exactly. there's not even it, clear, it, it, uh, among Native Americans, there's not even a clear uh, consensus on that. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, there's a lot of uh, teams on reservations or from uh, high schools that are most mostly Native American that are named Redskins or or Indians or something along those lines. Like it's not a, and I, I think very obviously the intent of as much as I hate the Redskins as an Eagles fan, and would love to see liberals just destroy the soul of another Washington. DC sporting <laughs> franchise. Uh, yeah. The intent of the Redskins name is not to offend uh, anyone. The intent is right. to say. Well, and, and you know, it, awesome. it was American That's Indians who helped who helped write the name, who helped come up with with it. Yeah, and the whole point is is saying that you know we're we're that's the point of sports teams name. You don't name them after something you don't think is awesome or or uh, inspiring. You know what I mean? Like you wouldn't name. Yep. A sports team is it's naming a sports team something is not a, a sign of disrespect it's it's the exact yeah. opposite uh, it's just, I mean it's stuff for people to be outraged about you know it, it, this is why I, I think we're on the verge of having a war because people are suddenly focused on all sorts of inconsequential things and when you go back and you look at it like 1913 and stuff and it was it, people were really 
focused on a lot of inconsequential things at the time. And it's just there's so much bad stuff happening, and we have white American liberals are focused on the name of a football team. Yeah. Well, what do you mean? We're on the verge of having a war? What, what kind of Well, war? you know, it just it seems like we get to these points in – a global society where the elite start focusing on nonsensical stuff like mm -hmm. like football teams right. and there are other things going on but they're distracted by feeling good about themselves rich people get distracted by things i mean when you look at the when you look at the the early turn of the 20th century um there were a lot of things that the the global leaders were totally ignoring uh particularly in their own backyard until such time as uh, an archduke was killed, and mm -hmm. suddenly you've got a world war break out. And it just, it seems like between China and Russia and things in the Middle East and Syria, and here we are worried in this country about whether or not a boy can use the bathroom in a girl's bathroom and worrying Come about... Come save me, I've died. Revi Before you go on about the doomsday prediction, <laughs> save my little character. Oh. Where are you? It's too late. Save yourself. Save yourself. Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to save myself, but these guys are up. Oh, they're coming. Kill the zombies. I'm trying. Kill them. How did you get killed and I'm alive? I know, that's oh, a good question. I think I just got uh, killed, too. <laughs> oh. oh. That's not good. But no, I self-revived. Oh, wait, revived you're back. I revived myself. You're back. Yes. Yeah. But, oh, yeah, so you really, you really think that... Uh, I, the, I mean, the, the, you I, could see like I mean, a major. The, the, there are so many serious things that we as a society are totally ignoring so that white liberals in Washington can feel good about themselves. You know, I just realized I'm the only guy left. And yeah, they're you killing have to kill me everything. Now. Kill everyone. Shoot the zombie. Die! Shoot him in the Die, face. zombie! Die, yes, zombie! You're doing it. No. And they no, left without I, I you. Missed. Oh, that's why I'm the only one left. The rest of you escaped all, on a flight. Uh, the flying RV left without you. You got abandoned. Yep. <laughs> In other words, you think this video game could be our future? Zombies and... <laughs> and yeah, uh, it, it pretty much could. Shit. I mean, we, we, we've got a lot of, of zombie liberals out there right now. A, a friend of mine has this theory that zombies are real, and this is why suddenly we find ourselves with Democratic majorities, because zombies only eat people with brains. Well, <laughs> there are a lot of dead people voting. Uh, from what I've seen, that that uh, look, I, I'm from that Louisiana. Not I know all about dead people voting. <laughs> well, look, you know, you know I, I'm an evangelical Christian. I'm pretty sure Armageddon's around the around the corner. I'm just not sure what day it's scheduled. Well, when you figure that one out, please tell the rest of us. <laughs> Give me some yeah. warning at least. Come on this show and announce it. I, I well, I, I won't know until we see a guy coming out of the sky on a white horse with a sword. Yeah, that'll be a good sign. Of it. That'll be a pretty good, not a not a good sign, but that'll be a good indication that that's what's happening. <laughs> I know you're busy and you have to go and you have a shelter to build for the coming Armageddon that you. Just yeah, absolutely. The, the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> the point when plants versus zombies becomes uh, our reality. We'll, yeah. we'll be prepared for it at least by having played this game. Yeah. So. It, okay. So next time I, I'll get good with Call of Duty, and next time we can kill bad guys. Yes. Next time we'll kill whatever stupid uh, enemy they dream up. Excellent. It can't. It can't be actual terrorists anymore because that's too <laughs> politically yeah, incorrect. Exactly. So they have to come up with yep. stupid new enemies all the time. I pref that's why I prefer playing just against zombies. At least we can all agree that they sh they should be re killed. Right. <laughs> so, <laughs> thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, we definitely want to have you on again uh, at some point in the future. Uh, maybe you can have your <laughs> five-year-old son play, and he would uh, be probably beat both of us. Yeah, he's actually pretty good. So <laughs> go make sure your bunker is stocked for the upcoming Armageddon. <laughs> All right, I'll do it. <laughs> thanks. Thanks. See you later.